I'll just introduce myself and what we want this to be is more of an interactive uh, session other, you know, rather than us just talking to you guys and it feeling like a lecture. So rather than holding your questions until the end, we'd actually rather you guys go ahead and throw questions out to us whenever you have them, okay? Is that fair? Does that sound good? Yeah. Um, so my name is Kat Kahn, and I don't know if you guys have heard of Studio Sweat, but it's a fitness studio that's kind of between Rancho Bernardo and Forest Ranch. There's a lot of people from Poway that go there as well. Um, and we are a spinning and uh, group fitness and personal training uh, studio. And so we hold, it's more like a boutique uh, studio in that we hold uh, classes that are anywhere between like four and 16 participants per class, not you know groups of 40 or anything like that. And the reason that we keep it smaller is so that we can actually help people because when you get one trainer in a room with you know 40 different you know, people of uh, varying fitness levels, it's almost impossible to actually really help them. So uh, that's why it's more of a boutique fitness studio that way. But um, how many of you guys have heard of spinning before? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Like we're bicycling in place. Yeah, in bicycling in place. Yeah, because we don't go anywhere. No, we <laughs> we get a lot done though. We just don't we just don't go very far. No. Um, so yeah, it's indoor cycling. It's is another term for spinning. Um, but a lot of our spinning classes have um, other things that are intermixed with them. Like we'll get on the floor and we'll do push-ups and lunges and sit-ups and all kinds of stuff like that. So. We have very few classes where we're just doing um, indoor cycling because people like to add in the strength elements as well. Um, and so Studio Sweat was launched back in 2010. So believe it or not, it's been a little over five years that we've been open and um, we've grown and, and changed locations twice because we needed some more room. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then before I opened up Studio Sweat, I was up in uh, Seattle and I had more of a full service gym, more like a 24 hour fitness up there. Um, I've been in fitness my whole life, but uh, before I opened my first gym, I was in the corporate world and I did technology consulting for a long time, but I quickly learned it was not something that I was passionate about or loved. And uh, so since I had always kind of taught group fitness classes on the side, I decided to stop doing what I didn't love, um, which was technology. And it's great. It's a great way to pay the bills. But I didn't love it, so I stopped doing that, opened my first gym, and um, have been full-time in the health and fitness industry since then. Okay. Bethany? Hi, guys. I'm Bethany. Um, let's see. I am one of the personal trainers, instructors um, at Studio Sweat. I've been with you since we opened, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I met her in a spin class, actually, yeah. and then we just kind of... I kept stalking her, it's and true. I couldn't get her out of my mind, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but we kept running into each other. She still lived in Washington, I was here, and whenever she would come down, we would just happen to run into each other. So it was just kind of a... Destiny. He was meant to be. Um, so I just kind of, when I met her, I was a stay-at-home mom. I have two kids, I was not working. I was totally out of shape, I'm not gonna lie, I just had kids. Um, and then I kept getting into better shape, and then I became kind of a helper to her with just admin, and then I became an instructor and a personal trainer, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I used to be extremely shy, and I almost didn't become an instructor because I couldn't be in front of people. I didn't wanna be the center of attention to be in front of people mic'd up, and having everyone look at me was like, I could go throw up and I wouldn't sleep and I couldn't do it. And so I just had to work through some of those fears and now this is like no big deal anymore and it's kind of crazy. But um, a little background on me, I grew up as a competitive gymnast, that was my sport. Um, I ended up getting hurt in that like my junior year in high school and so I thought well I'll go play soccer because I couldn't sit still. And then um, I went to college and I played um, soccer in college. and just had a blast. So I've always been in fitness one way or another, active. Um, so it was just kind of a very natural transition for me to step into this job and have a blast doing it. Um, it's funny that you should say that because believe it or not, for me, when I was young, my parents didn't put me in any sports, nothing. Um, and so the first time I uh, got involved in any sort of you know sport or activity was in um, seventh grade, and I had to kind of sign myself up. <laughs> you know, my parents, they just weren't into it, they had too many kids, and 
Um, but so I know, right? And so uh, I started running track, and um, next thing I knew, I was doing track and, and then cheerleading for, for several years as well. But um, so um, another thing that Bethany and I both have in common is neither of our parents were big into nutrition at all. They didn't cook. Um, my mom uh, had s sugary sweets in the house at all times on the counters, and um, I ate them. I didn't, you know, of course I ate them, right? They're, they're right there <laughs> they're on the counter, but, um, you know, we went out to dinner all the time, and so I didn't come from a background where I had very good role models when it came to nutrition. And, and you were the same way, right? Mainly just because of my schedule. Like, my parents loved food, they loved to cook, and they would cook, but I would be, I would go straight from school to gymnastics, and I would rock in the door at 9 p.m. So I was doing homework, you know, to and from in the car. So I never saw a lot of you meals. guys know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I never saw meals being prepared, so like, I'd walk in the door at 9 p.m. starving and have a bowl of cereal. So that was, I didn't learn to cook till like, Four years, five years after I was married, because I had no interest in it. And Poor so, husband. yeah. <laughs> and I, so that's one of the things that you know you may or not um, deal with yourselves. Uh, kind of two different things. You guys may or may not have parents that are, you know, uh, cooking healthy meals. And you know, how many of you guys eat a lot of fast food or food on the go? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I get, I get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, what I learned is that I, I couldn't let that stop me um, and I couldn't let that continue to be an excuse for eating poorly. And it, as much as when you're young, Bethany and I are here to tell you, because uh, you're, when you're young your metabolisms are higher and you're going to be burning off you know, all the junk, most of the junk food and everything like that that you take in and you're very active. But when you do start to become um, an adult, you, you know, you have to work, you know, you have kids and there's a lot of things that get in the way and you likely won't be as active as you guys are now. So, um, you know, it can catch up to you is the bottom line. But one of the first things that we want to touch on with you guys is skinny does not mean fit. And um, if you look at Bethany and I, I mean, here, stand up. We are both equally as fit. Opposite bodies. I'm 5'8 and naturally super duper small boned. Bethany comes from a gymnast background. She's obviously. I have on heels today, so yeah. I'm probably like 5'2, five 5'3, five but without them, I'm 5'0. Right. So and you I can have, see. like, I just have a thicker belt than she does. <clears throat> and, and that's okay. And that's one of the things that we always are talking about, you know, at the studio and with everybody that we come in into contact with is um, that fit doesn't mean skinny, you know. Bethany has, you know, a much shorter build. She's got actually a lot more natural muscle than I do. And um, so we want to really encourage you guys and, and, and to, to encourage you guys to understand that skinny sometimes can be actually very unhealthy. Fit means, you know, well, a lot of doctors, how many of you guys have heard of, sorry, Cher, we're going to talk to this, but um, how many of you guys have heard of BMI? BMI, body mass index. So Cher, explain what, just go ahead, just explain what BMI is. Well, how, it's, how it's calculated. Well, what it you, is. <laughs> it's just looking at your, your body mass and relative to sort of your height and what you're carrying, it's, it's a way to kind of measure where you fit relative to where, where your height is. So again, it's not really, um, it, you, there's sort of a range of what's considered to be healthy. And again, a lot of that really goes into where, what your body frame might be, and right. that's just genetically what your makeup is. And so when you go, usually you'll go see your physician. So Bella was just there Friday, you got a body mass index um, you know, number. And, and so they're looking at that, but there's a range. And so when you look at your height and what your weight is expected to be, but also your age, that's all included in there. And that really is where you are considered to be more healthy. And like Pat is saying, if you're too thin, that's actually not considered great. That's not a good healthy thing. You really want to be within what's considered appropriate for your, your particular height and, and age and weight. So it's, it's a gauge that, that doctors use, and there's only so much time they have with each patient, and you know, um, and you guys will go, have to go and get physicals and stuff like that. But here's the interesting thing. 
Do I look unhealthy to you guys? Mm -hmm. okay. do what, I look, about, what about me? Yeah, do, do I look too skinny? No. no. No, like you should see my biceps. They're huge. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. They're average. But she um, looks thin. Yeah, but I look thin, but um, it, my BMI will tell you that I'm underweight and unhealthy, and that's far from true. Um, and so it's not a perfect gauge, but it's, it's, it's a gauge that they have. How about Bethany? Does she look unhealthy to you guys? No, thank you. My BMI says that I am overweight, which is, I hate the BMI because, because I'm not overweight, yeah. but with the amount of muscle that I carry, which weighs more than fat, mm -hmm. and my height, which is like, so my BMI, my BMI is like this. I have a lot of muscle, which bumps up my weight, I'm short, so it hits me. So I'm obese on the BMI scale, which obese. drives me absolutely crazy. Because then my doctor will be like doing the pelvic exam, and she's like, "Oh, I can totally see your hip muscles," and I'm thinking, or your hip bones, and I'm thinking, "Oh, and I'm overweight. Like, really? Like, yeah. this is so take it with a grain of salt." Yeah. So it's, that's that's why we bring that up because we don't want you guys to look at your BMI. Go ahead. Oh well, I was just gonna say that a lot of soccer players mm -hmm. are overweight as well, just because. They have really muscular legs. Yeah, so they're not overweight, but they're considered yeah. overweight when they look at their BMI, right? So if you go to the doctor gals and, and they tell you that you're, you know, if you look at the BMI scale that you're overweight or worse yet obese, that's, that's never a word anybody wants to hear, right? Obese, right? It, it's not necessarily true, but you just have to understand that that's the tool that they have to use. That's what they're given to measure because they don't have the time um, to conduct body fat tests on everyone. Um, and if they did, they would. And so when we uh, train clients, one of the first things that we'll do, if they're okay with it, um, because it's great for them to see where they were in the beginning of you know, training with a, a personal trainer as compared to later, is we'll go, okay, well, are you okay with me testing your body fat? And um, what a body fat does is kind of tells you, you know, what percentage of your body is made of, of fat versus everything else. And, you know, it's not just muscle, there's bones, ligaments, all that other kind of stuff as well. So that to us is more of a measure of your, your fitness level or, or your health. You know, I'm not testing your organs or anything like that, your lung capacity by doing that. But um, it's more a, a, of a measure that we appreciate because I can look at someone almost immediately and, and tell you they're oh, about 18% body fat or something like that. And it's just a much better gauge um, for looking at someone's fitness level. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions on that? Yeah. How like what is the amount of normalcy body fat? Um, well, the, the different ranges, and again, I hate the word, like, if you look at the way they say obese, which is just crazy. Um, the different ranges are, um, you know, obese, um, healthy, or average, I think it's considered fitness level, athletic level, and then what's uh, essential body fat. And one of the things that's really interesting is um, there's different scales for men and women. And a man's body fat, like for essential body fat, is 2%, and a woman's is 12%, okay? If I'm, I, I think it's something yeah, like that, so very, very different. And that lean, lean body fat, you're going to be looking at, like, some of your professional athletes, your yeah. endurance, you know, those ultra marathoners, those people are going to be in that type of a category. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I think... Um, 21% is considered, like, it's something like 17 to 21% is considered um, your, your uh, fitness level, and then, you know, between 12 and, and 16 or 17% is considered athletic. And like I said, with guys, you take 10% off of each of those numbers because they, they naturally have so much more um, muscle mass than, than us ladies do. And let's keep it that way, right? So, um, so good question. So, I mean, if, you, if you're in the, you know, anywhere from, you know, 13 on the low end, really, you don't really want to be at 12%. I, most people don't, most women don't want to be at 12%. Most um, want to be at 13 to, to maybe in the mid, mid to low 20s, okay, percentage-wise. And honestly, too, for my own personal opinion, with you guys at such a young age, I wouldn't strive to focus so much on like what your BMI number is yeah. or what your body fat percentage is. Yeah. To me, like um, I don't want you guys to focus on that. I want you to focus on 
your general health. Mm -hmm. do, my, do my jeans fit? Am I comfortable in my jeans? Are they tight on my waist? Like, let that be your gauge as opposed to this number that you're striving for. So I would say for you guys... But you'll um, hear it. You're yeah, going to hear those numbers, hear it. so but don't let it on, scare you. You know, or don't let... Do your clothes fit comfortably? Yeah. You know, do you feel good about yourself? And do you feel healthy? You know, are you enjoying that lollipop? Well, enjoy it. Who cares? Like, just, you know, the general. Don't be consumed by the number. Um, and so that's kind of brings us to another topic which I feel pretty passionately about and that's focusing more on what you should eat as opposed to what you should not eat and and almost everything that we're saying to you guys today is our personal opinions so you have to keep that in mind um, but I've seen a lot of people crash and burn especially ladies crash and burn trying to diet focusing on restriction you know in other words restricting their calories saying I'm not gonna have any sugar um, a lot of times what happens when someone says, you know what, I am not, I'm no longer eating cookies is, is a week later, they, a week later they'll find themselves in a closet with a bag of Oreos, you know, and so rather than saying, I'm not going to have that anymore, well, just think about eating things in, in moderation. I mean, if you're only eating sugar, that's a problem. I mean, I can't get, I can't even start to tell you the health risks that are involved in a diet completely comprised of sugar, okay? Um, but there's a ton. So if I'm focusing more on what to eat, I'm gonna say something like, you know what, I'm gonna just try and get a couple servings of vegetables in today, a couple servings of fruit, really focusing on real foods that are out there. I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna try and shoot for two to three servings of whole grains today, and you know, of course, then you have to know what whole grains are, and then I need protein. Okay, so those are you know, the, the kinds of things that I always talk to my personal training clients and, and kids, and my kids know how to read labels now and stuff like that. Doesn't mean they don't eat junk food, because they do. Um, but again, even with my own children, what I'm focusing on is, did you get your vegetables in today? Did you get enough protein in today? I personally don't mind if they have snacks and stuff, as long as they're eating the stuff that they need to eat first. Um, and even when it comes to like soda, uh, you know, I'll tell my personal training clients, look, if you want a soda, that's fine, uh, but I want you to drink 16 to 20 ounces of water first, and then if you still want that soda, go ahead. Because one of the biggest problems with soda is if you're drinking soda, you're not drinking water. You know, you can do a ton of research on why shouldn't I drink soda, and you know, take the sugar aside, obviously. Um, the, the problem with everyone drinking so much soda is that you're not drinking water and your body really needs water. Soda doesn't really hydrate you, so. Um, milk does. Did you guys know that? Milk hydrates you? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so, before we talk about, I do want to talk about reading labels and kind of knowing what it is that you're putting in your body, but do you guys have any questions on what we just talked about? Mm -hmm. So you're proposing that we shouldn't, like, be like those people that only eat, you know, vegetable, or not only eat vegetables, but only eat, you know, a specific diet. You're saying eat what you're supposed to eat first, and then you can have what you want. You should, that, that's how I feel. That's how I feel, is that, um, that if you focus on restricting things, that it's almost a mental battle that you're having with yourself, and, and usually it backfires on you. And it's also really hard to completely make a U-turn for, for those of you that you know, have diets where you're, already, you're eating a lot of junk food. It's, it's almost unrealistic, I think, to, to say you're just going to stop. You're just going to stop eating all this stuff altogether. My sister, for example, she's addicted to junk food. She's addicted to fast food. Like she'll tell you. Uh, by the way, uh, I have five brothers and sisters, and um, four of the five are uh, overweight. Like, and I mean quite a bit overweight. And so the whole genetic thing, mm, you know, I, I'm just telling you that a lot of people will say, oh, you're so lucky, you know, you're, you're so naturally thin. And I'll say, luck has nothing to do with it, sister. <laughs> like, I work my tail off, you know, to stay healthy, and, and I watch what I eat. And it doesn't mean I don't have cookies. Sometimes I do. But what I focus on more is, did I get like a big green salad in today? And do I feel good about that? Did I get enough protein in? But then the question comes in, well, how, how much it, you know, do you need to have, right? So, and we can talk about that too. I think two girls struggle so much with food, you know, in general of 
just I think you guys just should focus on like a healthy balanced diet mm -hmm. you know don't say okay I'm not having any carbs today because tomorrow you know what you're gonna eat all carbs so just focus on like the balancing of the days did I get a fruit did I get There's a rain. vegetable you know all that sort of stuff not really yet Oh, it's just went. Yeah, it's just went. <laughs> you know, just don't focus on, you know, focus on did I get a fruit, did I get a vegetable, is this, what is on my plate like a balanced diet, is all food groups represented, you know, try to have each meal balanced and healthy. So when you, um, and I, I kind of wish I had a whiteboard, but in general when we're talking, um, can I have a plate, like a, just like a dinner, dinner, dinner plate? Sure. Sure. Um, I'll show you guys in general what, what you kind of want it to look like. But while we're waiting for her to bring that back, how many of you guys have heard that carbs are bad for you? Wow. So everyone. So shame, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, this is my opinion, but I completely disagree. It's all um, the kind of carbs that you eat. So let's talk about examples of carbs. So do you guys know, uh, can you guys shout out some examples of what you think are carbohydrates? Carbs. Um, bread. Bread. Okay. Okay, what kind of bread? Any kind? Like wheat. White. Yes, yes. <laughs> Noodles. Yeah, pasta. Pasta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? What are a lot of you holding in your hands? All oh, crackers. Sugar. Crackers. Sugar. Sugar's carbs. Okay. Okay. Anything else? What, um, when you go to Starbucks, what, what's in the mm. display case? Caffeine. Okay. Pastries. 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 All those pastries, right? Dairy, it, actually dairy does have carbs in it. Dairy is kind of a, most dairy is going to be in almost an equal um, amount of carbs and protein. Cookies. Cookies. Yeah. Isn't, doesn't everything have carbs? No, not everything has carbs, but a lot of things have carbs in them. One of the major ones that um, I haven't heard you guys say yet is fruit. So, um, and when I say that, I'm not saying fruit is bad for you because I've never seen anyone get fat from eating too much fruit. Okay, <laughs> it's not. That's just. Uh, it, it's an old wives' tale that that you'll hear a lot of. Um, pretty much, if if. Um, it's something that grows in the earth, or what do you say, Bethany, what you're saying? I said, if it is man-made, probably steer clear of it, and if it's God-made, go for it. In general. That's kind of my yeah, that's, like, rule of thumb. That's real food versus, you know. Yeah. yeah. Or I've said, if it's, <clears throat> process. A, if it's in a box, probably steer clear of it. Is that realistic, ladies? No. no. It's, yeah, it's not. It, as much as I... Appreciate that, and oh, I yeah. and it's I a wish guide. it's a guide. It's kind of a try strive for that. It's if if it's one of those two things, then it's probably good for you, <laughs> more than likely. Um, anyways, carbs. Let's go back to carbs. So uh, I'm gonna go back to Sherry because Sherry, you're a doctor, right? Well, not a medical doctor. Look, I'm an occupational therapist and my doctor. Oh, uh, that's right. So that's sorry, right. yes, but that's but I, okay. I will do my best to help whatever. Okay, I Sherry. What I can. Sherry, give me um, an example of what you would consider a healthy carbohydrate. Um, I would, what would I take as a healthy carb? Um, I would say my whole wheat toast this morning was a decent healthy carb. Whole wheat toast. So one of you guys mentioned wheat, the other mentioned white. Um, in general, when it comes to um, wheat bread, it's going to be what color? Brown. Brown, Brown right? White bread is going to be? White. <laughs> exactly. So um, white bread is a simple carbohydrate. It's not what you would hear is classified as a complex car carbohydrate. Um, which basically, if it's a simple carbohydrate, like sugar, of course, that's also a simple carb. That, that is not going to provide you, I'm not going to get into all the details, but it's not going to provide much nutrition, if any, to, to your body. Whereas the wheat bread, there's a lot of, any multigrains, um, brown, brown rice, um, by the way, potatoes. Potatoes are carbs, guys. So um, there's, but the, the thing about a lot of different potatoes out there is they, depending on the type of potato that you have, there actually can be a lot of nutritional value in a potato. Is potato bread good for you? Or? Um, it's high in carbs. It's really high in carbs. And that's where Bethany was talking about, like the balancing act. It's okay to have some potato bread, just don't eat all potato bread, you know? Um, so you guys, Carbs in general, um, you don't want to say I'm going to cut carbs out because 
Carbs are really important to, they provide, if, if you have the right carbs, they're going to provide energy and they're also what power your brain. So if you guys want to have enough energy for the day, for your sports, and if you want to be able to be a smart thinker, do not cut, cut carbs out of your diet, ladies. Just eat the right carbs. And some of the right carbs are wheat toast. We just talked about that, right? Any, anything with multi-grain, okay? Um, Sweet potatoes. Okay, what else? There's something I said that nobody fruit. said. Fruit. fruit, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. So can carbs be viewed like fuel to your car? Are you asking me? Yeah, like for yes. this. So like Absolutely. you guys know when you see those cars on the road and then you see the poor guys carrying the little gas tank back to their car because they let their car run out of gas. Mm -hmm. If you don't eat carbs, you're out of gas. You're out of gas. You're done. Well, and just to piggyback on that, a lot of times your coaches, if you're playing a sport and you have something that's going to require that, that tank to be full the next day, that may be when they're asking you to do more carbs for your dinner yeah. so that you have it. And that's an example where you might be looking at, okay, I want to make sure I get more in that, that day mm -hmm. in my tank. Um, and that's a really good point, though, because like, let's say that your coach says, make sure you carb up. If you choose simple carbs, they're just going to break down and go through your system right away. They're not going to help you. They're not going to provide what your coach is looking for. So if you were to have fruit and some whole grain pasta, something like that, that's what's going to power you through. By the way, some vegetables do have carbs in them as well. So, but the things that we generally, that we just spoke about, those are the things that have carbohydrates in them. Um, and um, um, someone mentioned dairy. Who was that? Yeah, so dairy also has some carbohydrates, but it's not the prime. I, in, most, um, in most dairy products like yogurt and um, milk, um, cheese, it's, it's not high in carbs. It's, it's actually still on the lower end of carbs, okay? But those are good things to eat, too. What, what kind of benefits do you think are in dairy products? Protein. Protein. Mm -hmm. um, isn't it like vitamin, vitamin C? Or which one? Um, D. D. I think there's some vitamin D. Calcium. Calcium. Isn't it like in a lot of dairy products that have like these like bacteria that fight off other bad bacteria? That's true. They can have some probiotics in them too. Yeah. Yeah. So. You, you, those of you that have, you know, any problems with dairy, if you're lactose intolerant or something like that, that's okay. You know, I get it. You don't have to have them. Like, I can't eat dairy at night, personally, so it's just kind of learning your body. Um, so, the, the key uh, macronutrients, so when you think of what something is made out of, the things that you're looking for, protein, healthy carbohydrates, what else? You guys know? Next one. Vegetables? Oh, vegetables in general, yeah. What are vegetables good for, you guys know? In general? There's a vitamin, I think vitamin C or C or something like Just that. Just vitamins in general. And um, vitamins and uh, minerals, um, those are the nutrients that just literally keep you healthy, keep your organs functioning, keep your digestive system running, keep your brain running, <laughs> fight disease. Um, you know, that's why you need to, if you're, if you're sick all the time, like when my kids are sick, I'm like, and I know this sounds really cliche, but I'm like, you're not eating your vegetables. Like, <laughs> like and I'm not making it up. I, I mean it. I'm not saying that just to pressure vegetables on them. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're not healthy right now. You're just eating, you know, junk food. Crap. Yeah. Um, people go on, like, juice diets where they just drink juice. Is mm -hmm. that good or bad? I guess you were saying no. My opinion is it's bad. Because you don't, if you're just drinking juice and you're only having fruit, where's your protein? <coughs> And the one that you guys haven't hit on and that we haven't touched about are healthy fats. Your body, and um, we don't have time to get into all the reason that, reason that your body needs, bodies need healthy fat. But your bodies do need healthy fat. And I don't mean like fish and chips. Like healthy fat is peanut butter. Um, a lot of, or almond butter, any of those types of things like that. A lot of people think that, um, uh, oh. I just lost my train of thought. Oh, a lot of people think peanut butter and they think protein. But peanut butter, it, it does have some protein, but it's primarily a healthy fat. Um, some people say that Nutella is bad for you and some people say that it's yeah. <laughs> so good that it's bad for you. <laughs> yeah. It's super duper high in sugar. So Nutella is really, it is yummy though. So going back to your um, juice 
question. Yeah, let's talk a about A lot that. of juice has a lot of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So even if you're, yeah, like go, what's that juice place that makes those smoothies? The juice. 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 Thank you. Have you ever read their label? Yeah. Holy cow. Like, I'm sure there's some good stuff, but for me, if I go to Jamba Juice, if I happen to be counting calories at the time, it puts me way out of whack on everything. Like, it, because I'm so small, I'm only allowed a certain amount of calories if I'm actually tracking it at that time. If she's trying to maintain her yeah. weight or... Yeah. Um, that could count as a meal and a half for me. And right then and there, like, I'm way over on my calories. I'm way over on it's my sugar. carbs. Yeah, and sugar, my sugar carbs. is just out of whack. And yeah. So, unfortunately... I know you guys all love that drama juice because I see you all drinking it. <laughs> but there's worse things that yes. you guys. There's worse. Well, things. I mean, if you go to McDonald's and grab a uh, milk milk what are, milkshake. Yeah. I haven't had one of those in so long. I'm like, what are those things? <laughs> I know milkshake. Like, um, I mean, come on. Okay, well, so let's talk about, it. and we'll get back to, you know, I still have this here, and I'm going to show you guys something on it, but while we're talking about Jamba Juice, what's another place that you guys go to to get drinks? Or you? Starbucks. Starbucks. Okay. Uh, I, I, like, I like Starbucks. I go there, but... Uh, <laughs> so, we have the shared app, so every time she pays for it, it sends me... Like a text that says, you know, your receipt is available. Receipt. Every but time I text, I text, I text her back. Enjoy. I'm like, whatever, Bethany. Um, <laughs> the the thing that I see um, a lot of girls and um, grown ups also walking out of there with is like the double chocolate chip mocha frappuccino, right? So it's not that we don't want. Um, <laughs> We don't want you guys to have bad body images or anything like that. We want you to, again, the first thing that we talked about is the difference between Bethany and I's builds, right? And not needing to be skinny. Let's look at what it means to be fit. What, what does it mean to be healthy, okay? Um, and that doesn't mean skinny, okay? Um, however, ladies, let's be realistic. You, it, you have to think about what you're putting in your body. You've been given one body, right? If you are sucking down those double chocolate chip frappuccinos with um, whipped cream and then syrup all over the top, I'm going to tell you guys right now, you might be able to get away with that now but because you're so, so active, but that for many people is over half of the calories that they should intake for the day to maintain their current body weight in one yummy beverage. Well, it's 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 realistic. No, uh, wouldn't you guys rather me be honest with you? Absolutely. How many knew that? That's good. That's Six hundred calories, yeah. Oh, even more, yeah. yeah. So for me, for example, to maintain my current body weight with as much as I work out, which is five days a week, I do work out five days a week. Um, sometimes one day less, sometimes one day more. Uh, but in general, I can have two thousand calories which is pretty high for a girl, but I'm five feet eight and I'm very active, okay? One of those drinks, when you do add the whipped cream, the syrup, the chocolate chips, everything that goes along with it can actually be almost a thousand calories. So one drink, that's half my calories for the day. How much nutrients am I getting in that? Not that much, if that Very little, very little. Well, yeah, I mean, very little, to be honest. Okay, I know that you guys have some questions. This is a comment, like, there was this one study that said those special drinks at Starbucks, they have as many calories as a Big Mac at McDonald's. Mm, they do. They actually do. A lot of them do because a Big Mac's probably, what, seven, eight hundred 800 calories? Um, and, yeah, a lot of those drinks have. Yeah, be, especially, they keep coming up with, what's the biggest size now, like Trente? <laughs> yeah, something like, you know? That's, you know, every ounce that you add is going to add calories in. I, I'm sorry, realistically, you need to you need to understand, you know, especially as you get older, how many calories about do I need to maintain my current weight? You shouldn't count calories every day, in my opinion. I mean, that's obsessing over food and, you know, just eat healthy. Also, is it like the Starbucks cup, like the normal one, not the small one, the normal one? Isn't it like the size of a human bladder or something like that? It's but huge. I'm, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Um, What's the healthiest type of bread that there is out there? Um, it, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. But um, when you guys are looking at a loaf of bread, um, and this goes back to talking labels, but when you're uh, looking at the ingredients, 
one of the first things I'll tell people to look for, by the way, I am not a registered dietitian. I just happen to know a lot about nutrition. I, I want to, and, and neither is Bethany. We have, a, at Studio Sweat, we have a registered dietitian on staff, and I defer to her for a lot of things. But when I, when I am reading a label, the first thing that I look for is the word whole. And if it doesn't say whole, then it's not actually a whole grain. If it says enriched, steer clear. It's a simple. It'll be the very, if you, if you flip that loaf of bread over, the first word will be enriched wheat flour, put it back. Look for whole instead of enriched. So that's kind of how you know. So when you look at your bread, whole wheat bread. That's it. But, but there are benefits, you guys, to other types of bread, believe it or not. Um, rye bread has some benefits. Most of the time you don't like it, but, you know, it's an acquired taste. Um, sourdough bread is even better than, than white bread. And the reason for that is, is, like, white bread will mess with your blood sugar levels, whereas sourdough has something in it that keeps them kind of more level. Um, so you don't have the highs and lows that you can with simple carbohydrates. So, but I mean, definitely, if, you had to, if I had to pick one, I would say whole wheat bread. And you guys, what's the first ingredient that you're going to look for? Whole. Oh. Oh, what are you going to steer clear of? Ranch. Absolutely. Yeah. It means man-made. It means they suck the good stuff out. <laughs> okay. um, your plate. Let's talk about your plate. This is a very simplistic approach, but and I and I don't have anything to draw on it, but. Basically, and I know this is going to seem like a lot for you guys, when you're looking at a plate, if you cut this plate into quarters, okay, what you would want to see is your healthy protein, ideas of healthy proteins? Mm -hmm. Meat. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, what kinds of meat? Fish. Fish. Fish has a lot of healthy fats in it too, most fish, most fishes. Chicken. Chicken. Steak. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, isn't eggs a healthy? Yeah, eggs. Mm -hmm. Beans. Beans. Beans actually are. They're pretty balanced between protein and carbohydrates, which is a great carbohydrate we haven't talked about, by the way, you guys. I put people on like a diet that I jokingly call the black bean diet. Because it's a it's a true complex carbohydrate. There's a lot of good nutrition in beans, you guys. If you were gonna torture me, put me on that. I'm going to. <laughs> right when we're done. <laughs> um, okay, those are all. And, and um, any vegetarians in the house? Okay, protein sources for you? Uh, nuts, peanut butter, eggs, mm -hmm. tofu. Yes. Yeah. You you nailed it right there. Um, it's gonna be a lot harder for someone who's a vegetarian to get the amounts of protein that, that your body needs. But all the things that she just talked about, she just has to eat a lot of them, right? Um, how many of you guys, well, I don't know if you've seen, but I have seen a lot of vegetarians that I call carbitarians because that's, they, they don't eat meat and literally all they eat is carbs. But if you're eating all of the things that she's talked about there, uh, and yeah, um, then, then you can be a healthy vegetarian as well. Um, but you'll see dark circles under their eyes, vitamin de deficiencies and stuff like that. They mean, that means they need to revise the diet. That's yeah, when my brother was in college, he decided to become a vegetarian. And I watched him get fat and I was like, yep. what are to. you eating? Yeah. And he said, well, I'm not eating meat because I'm a vegetarian. And yeah. I was like, well, then what are you eating? Yeah. Pasta, cheese, and that was about it. Yeah. I was like, and your muscles need protein, ladies. So if you want your body to have more muscle and less fat, then you need to make sure you're getting plenty of protein. Plenty of protein in. So we got my protein in this corner. Down here in this corner, I'm going to have my healthy carbohydrate. Okay. And we've talked about lots of good examples. And then guess what the other half of the plate's going to be for my dinner? Vegetables. Yeah, vegetables. So a serving of vegetables is, is a pretty decent amount, right? So it doesn't mean that you have to have half your plate filled with broccoli. You can mix it up anything bright and colorful. My kids love bell peppers, for example. Um, but again, so if you look at the plate as a whole and you cut it in half, you've got a lean protein here. You've got a healthy carbohydrate here. We're not avoiding healthy carbohydrates. We're avoiding simple carbohydrates and then the other half vegetables, okay? So just talking in general terms, ladies, shoot for two to three servings of vegetables per day. That's really hard unless you include vegetables as a snack. I mean, realistically speaking, it's going to be hard for most of you. So shoot for the moon and land in the stars when it comes to vegetables, okay, ladies? So if you shoot for three servings, maybe you get two. A serving cup to two cups, depending and on don't the vegetable. And don't be afraid to try new vegetables. Like, I've really opened up my eyes the last couple of years to vegetables, because mm -hmm. I used to be really, really picky about my vegetables, and I would 
not even like touch them. And I remember my mom would say, "Don't you haven't touched your vegetables?" And I would reach over and I touch them, and I'd be like, "I'm done." But like honestly, the last couple of years, I've been much more adventuresome yeah. in trying my yeah. vegetables. Yeah. And it has made a world of difference. And I've noticed that if my, you know, if half of my plate, and I might even include like a spinach salad on the side, if I've got that many vegetables in one sitting, it holds me for the day. For like, the, that's I mean, it. you know, till my next meal, it absolutely will. I'm satisfied. I'm not thinking, what can I eat now? Now, you know, those vegetables really fill me up and hold me. So yeah, kind of and nice. I'll try and knock them out in one hit. Like, I'll just be like, no, I don't want to have two or three servings of vegetables today. But I'll, I will, but I'll have them all in one sitting. I'll just have like a ginormous salad with lots of vegetables in it. And then I'm done with my vegetables for the day. And I feel good. Like, I feel a lot better because I got them in. Couple servings of um, fruit per day. Shoot for that. Make sure that you're getting your lean protein in. Get some dairy in and you guys are good to go. If you, if you have all of those things, you're going to be, and you're focusing on getting those things in, you're going to be less focused on what not to eat because you won't, quite be, you won't be quite as hungry for those other things. You guys want to talk fitness? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's stop, talking. let's stop talking about nutrition for a little bit. Um, so you guys are, raise your hand if you're in a sport or some physical activity right now. Holy cow, is that everybody? I love it. Okay, I'm very cool. I'm so, so happy to hear that, you guys. Um, and you guys are in eighth grade, so you're going into high school next year? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I hope you guys continue with your physical activity. If you're not on a, a team or sport, though, um, get, get involved some way. Keep going. Keep your physical activity up in some way. It doesn't have to be an hour-long activity. I, you know, Bethany and I were talking and she's like, well, what, what should we recommend? And I'm like, that's a, that's a really loaded question because if you guys are all, how many times per day do you guys have uh, some sort of practice for dance, for soccer, for every day, every day, every day, every day. <laughs> every day. do you think that's going to continue into your adulthood? No. no. It's not, right? And so that's kind of where you'll see things shift. You'll see a lot of girls go into college and they call it the freshman 20. You know what the freshman 20 is? They gain 20 pounds. Yeah, gain 20 pounds. Yeah, because you're going from practicing every day and now you're eating more, you know, and all of a sudden you're 20 pounds heavier. And, you or know. you're still eating for, you know, you've been active, 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 and you're, you've got that diet that supports that, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're not active anymore, but you still eat the diet of the very, very active old you, and so that's when kind of that flip happens too. And we used to see it a lot with gymnasts, where they would either quit mm -hmm. or they would get hurt. And you can pretty much eat whatever you want as a gymnast because your activity level is so high. Hours and hours. That yeah. time that you're either out because of an injury or you quit, we used to see a lot of times these girls would just kind of balloon and it was really sad. Yeah. And so just be really aware of does my fitness level support this nutrition that I'm taking in? And if not, what needs to, there needs to be a balance in there and an yes. adjustment made. So I think it's important when you're, you know, even now you guys are very active, but it's important as you get older to find something that you actually really enjoy to do. So for, for us, Bethany and I are addicted to spinning and so are a lot of other people. It's one of those things that's high energy, there's music, there's a good group of people around you. I mean, it's literally like you need to get your sweat on, you know, and if you're going to be addicted to something, that's a good thing to be addicted to. Um, strength training, guys, is, is so incredibly important. Um, you know, if you guys have noticed, the build that is considered, the body build that's considered the most, most attractive right now is, is someone who's a little more muscular and fit, um, you know, uh, you, Agree. Someone who has more of an athletic build, not not the skinny build. What do you guys think? What do you guys think is an attractive body? Abs. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice> abs. <laughs> we all have abs. <laughs> They're all there. So flat abs is what you're saying. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Flat abs. Okay. <laughs> what else? What do you guys think? Like, tell me someone. Tell me um, a, a celebrity that you guys think has a hot little body. If you care about bodies. Jennifer Lawrence. J Lo. J Lo. So J Lo has curves, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's got a lot of muscle in those glutes right there. Yeah. Would you say? Would you call her skinny? Mm, well, 
Yeah. Yeah. She's but like she's, she's thin. She's thin. Yeah. yeah. But then like she works out. She does work out night. a lot. She works out a lot. But she's not. She doesn't seem to me to be focused on just being skinny. She's she, yeah. she seems to be focused on being fit. So, and Jennifer Lopez is is kind of smaller up top, and then she's got those muscular you know glutes in the bottom, and so that's why I'm saying if you think of even the Jennifer Lo or uh, yeah J Lo build. She's definitely more athletic looking than she is skinny looking. So I'm, I'm really happy that that's in and I hope it sticks. But I think it's really important to find something that you love and not just not just give up. You know, um, there's so many different, especially now and especially in San, San Diego, there's so many avenues that you guys can go down when it comes to finding something that you love. What are things other than your guys' you know, sports that you're in that you do? Oh, and then and the other thing is there's a lot of adult recreation leagues, too, in San Diego, which is nice. Have you guys um, ever gone to, to work out at a gym or a fitness studio? Or? Yeah. yeah, so tell me about it. I'm going to look at you. Because <laughs> you're a little, they think of you as like, as like a little kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that made you feel like uncomfortable. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, okay. What else? It's kind of like overwhelming, mm -hmm. like of all the things that are in there and stuff. That's uh, that's a fair point. I'll tell you those that the, the people that just and I'm not saying you shouldn't just go to a gym, but it is overwhelming and you don't really know where to start when you just walk into you know a fitness center. So what I would recommend to you guys is that you find a place where you feel accepted. Don't give up after one shot. Find a place where you feel accepted, and there is no better. Um, mechanism for fitness, I think, than group fitness. So um, the things that are great about group fitness, meaning a class, is a lot of times you have to sign up for them. So there's that accountability. And then you're in um, the gym with a group of people that have a common goal. Okay, You're all there to kind of try and do the same thing. And you feel a lot of support that way. So find some place that you feel accepted and, and that you feel. You'll get to know people in that group setting. I mean, mm -hmm. Michelle was in my class all summer. and. You know, there's. I had a group of girls and actually there was a couple guys there too, but a group of kids. And you know, during the summer, you guys all kind of became friends. You and not, you know, different schools. Was she in Teen Titans? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah. but I mean, it's just a fun environment. You get to know people. There comes some accountability because your friend yeah. will be like, "Dude, where were you? I didn't see you last week." And you know, you have to come up with a real quick excuse as to why you weren't there. Right. So find something you guys like. Yeah. So we have to wrap this up. You guys, uh, do you guys have any other questions for Bethany or myself before we let you guys go home with your Sunday? I'll just say, your moms are probably okay with you wanting to go with them. If they go to a place, they're probably happy to have you go with. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's really fun. We have a lot of daughters that come with their moms to Studio Sweat. So if you guys ever want to come try a spinning class for free to see what it is that we're talking about, just tell your moms. And, and you know they can bring you guys in and it's a lot of fun. You did a lot of spinning when you were yeah. there, right? So and we do have a program and I'm not here to sell our program or anything like that, but we do have a summer program if you guys want an introduction to strength training and, and cardio workouts and like that we the style that we do at Studio Sweat. So all right you guys. Well thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, go ahead. So where did you say that you were located? So we are do you guys know where um uh what's the San Diego volleyball is? Yeah. Over where Bounce, California? Yeah. Do you guys remember where Bounce, California was? Yeah. yeah. We're, close we're right to. there. We're right. We're in that same building as Bounce, California was in there. Yeah. They're gone now. But um, so it's just kind of between Forest Ranch and, and here. Right off of Camino um, Del Norte. So, so we can we do like a follow up email oh. and we can put the name of the studio and sure. your website stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. If you guys ever have any questions and Sherry knows how to get a hold of me if you guys have follow up questions, but we're here for you. We understand where you guys are coming from. It's not easy to be a girl um, at any time, but it's it's definitely uh, you know challenging as you get older. To but I'm I'm really happy to see the world turning towards um, it, turning the way it is towards just focusing on overall health and, and fitness instead of a specific body image or type. Okay. All right, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you.